Hey, this is Angie Scarpa. And Melanie Maka Evie. And Emily Burton. And Alice Austin of Black Savage. And you're listening to Tom and Zeus on Shout It Out Loudcast. That's right. We're back with another episode of Dorm Damage, the show where anything and everything is on the table, and the table gets smashed. This week, one of the things that Zeus and I love, not as much as Kiss and Grunge and whatever, but we love our stand-up comedy. Yeah, when you find a good one, sometimes they're like obscure, or sometimes a certain joke hits you more than other people. You go to it. A good comedy special is I can watch it over and over. And it's like the brilliance of the delivery with the laughter of the crowd and the expressions that the comedians make it. Some people make it work. Others don't. But some of the ones that work, these ones are our favorite. And we're going to list 10, not in any order. No, and it was tough. And it was tough coming up with 10 because, again, me and you, we love this stuff. And now... With streaming TV, I mean, Netflix actually has a category. They have a separate individual category of stand-up comedy where you could just go and just exhaust yourself. And then they're all on YouTube and they're all, I mean, they're all everywhere. I remember back, back, I don't know, in the 90s or even in the 80s, it was either had to wait for them to come on HBO or you'd buy like the VHS, the DVD. And some of these, some of these are legendary and some of them might be some deep cuts but we'll find out. Yeah, I have a bunch still on DVD. Oh, yeah, me too. And I'll go to them, you know, sometimes, and uh, they're just fucking awesome, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just fantastic. So let's start this thing off. Uh, I'll do my number 10, Tom. Yeah, and again, these are, for, for me at least, like you said, these aren't ranked. They're just 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna go with uh and this one's a little bit of a dark horse i would say okay and because he's probably the least popular on this movie that they did and that is on the original kings of comedy from 2000 dl hughley set oh nice and so never mind the jokes he does about like banging your wife and your kid walks in the room and stuff okay but he has this thing where at the end of the show he just stopped fucking ripping on people in the crowd. Yep. And the first guy sitting there eating nachos in a fucking like Bill Cosby sweater. He's all over him. And then he and he's like ripping on everybody. Then he goes to this huge guy goes, hey, man, I ain't going to fuck with you. How long you been out? It's like, <laughs> you don't get no muscles like that from no gym. <laughs> that guy. And then he sees some guy in the corner and he literally has a, a fucking members only jacket on oh dude and he's like god damn yeah exactly and then the camera goes on him and the guy's like oh shit it's like you had to go way back in the closet and pull that one out and then then the other guy is like holy shit you got some big ass teeth look at those teeth the teeth like that your birthday's on easter isn't it Oh, oh my god i just had it's like you better not go down on any woman <laughs> i can't have kids anymore I give some woman a hysterectomy with those teeth <laughs> fucking hilarious i love people that can think on their feet oh yeah I, I never watched his tv show i haven't seen other specials but i watch original kings of comedy i love cedric the entertainer i love bernie mac bernie mac rest and in peace Steve harvey's yep. actually pretty funny too on that yep. one he does the quick joke and he's like the <laughs> temptations is five of them. One mic. They all share mic. Now <laughs> you got all these rap groups, 50 people on stage. Everyone's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> fucking hilarious. But original Kings of Comedy is great, but I'm specifically mentioning DL Hughley, 2000. Kings of okay. Comedy. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say 2000. Right. All right. 2000. Yes. 2000. All right. For me, I'm going to go with uh, people. Some people might say, depending on your style and your taste, but arguably on the Mount Rushmore of stand-up comedians, some people call him the goat. 
I'm going from 1992, the Jammin in New York City special with George Carlin. An absolute, I mean, Dude, you could put you could have put if, any of his. On. I know. Well, that's the thing. There's a, there's a bunch of guys on this list you could put, but I'm pulling that one because the not only is the guy fucking brilliant, but 30 years later, pretty much everything he says applies to today. And the guy was just the absolute. And he was one of those comedians where he just he made fun of everybody and everything and shit on everyone. So you never knew where he stood like politically or socially because he just everybody was open season fucking brilliant he hated fucking liberal like what do you call him fat ass doctor wearing liberal (laughs) save the planet assholes yeah and then he hated christian conservative oh yeah like he fucking hated everybody Everybody. yep he was brilliant great one brilliant i mean tom i I could have picked a million of them i'm gonna stay on that theme Okay. Called him. Yeah. I'm going to take It's Bad for You, his last special, the 2008 oh. one. Oh, okay. And it, he's just so brilliant. That's the thing. It's brilliance. It's, so he does the thing about like, well, you know, when you die, if you go to heaven, your parents will look after you. Okay. What if you're adopted? Who <laughs> looks after you? Your <laughs> real mother? Your real mother doesn't even know where the fuck you are. Exactly. What if you killed your parents? <laughs> are they still responsible to watch you? Like stupid shit like that makes fun of fucking religion. And then he gets into this little bit. And I, this is the reason why I picked this one. And I've mentioned it on the show and I've played clips from it. Yeah. And that is this thing where he calls this <laughs> child worshiping. Oh, yeah. Parents. Who yeah. Are like. Little Billy can never do wrong. Yep. And now, what do we say to Billy when he's the last one? You were the last winner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> these kids don't know anything. They grow up until one day their boss says to him, Billy, grab your shit. Get the fuck out of here. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> he's so relentless. And it, he has no tact. He'll throw the word. Can't he'll throw the word. Oh, yeah. Oh, torture shit yeah. out. And it's so vicious. That's why it's so fucking funny. And, and then he, to me, he, to me, he is the king of what became like, like the observational humor. Oh you know? my which, God. Which is, which is what I love. I love. And, and there's guys on my list that are obviously excel at that, <laughs> that didn't necessarily have to be overtly sexual or filthy. And there are guys like that on my list too. And I know those yours, but the guy who could literally, like you said, literally just talk about something. That is normal and every day. And you're like, holy shit, you're right. And there are people like that. And shit, that might be me this time. R- like, right. he's like, now you're sending these kids off to fat camp, computer camp, right? leadership <laughs> camp. He's like, leadership <laughs> camp? Isn't that where Hitler went? <laughs> it's it's so- fucking genius. That one is from 2008. Yep. It's bad for you. I saw him at the Melody Tent right before he croaked. It was fucking yeah. awesome. Just uh, nice, Just nice. Genius. All right, I'm going to go with a guy. Uh, I'm going to take his special from 2014. He's in the forefront right now. If you follow, if you're on TikTok or social media, he's he's still around. He's been around for a while, and he keeps getting more cutting edge. He's a he's 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 a right winger, but he loves to shit on everybody. And this is from 2014. I'm sorry you feel that way, Bill Burr. Now people either love him or hate him or I'm fine him to be a right winger. Do you? No, I guess you know what. I take that back. I think. It just seems like to me that my antenna is up when he shits on. It's kind of he's almost like George Carlin, where he, he shits, shits on women, and he's yeah. not scared to go there, and he's not scared to go there against black well, Americans because or his, because he's married to a black American. His rant against the women's movement is yeah. hilarious because he talks about why. How come no one's watching the WNBA? <laughs> I know that's how, how, how come they're not making this? And I, when he does this impersonation of women, how come yeah. they're not making the same amount of money? You're like, because you're not watching it. Why yeah, exactly. I watch it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. He's like, he was that whole thing about the WNBA. Yes. And he's like, that's on you women. Fuck you. Yep. You would support it, but you don't. You don't. You so it's my to. fault. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That is brilliant. I yeah. love him. Yeah. I find his sense of humor fantastic. And if you can catch him in a, on the early, early part of the Chappelle show when he was yes. really young. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, he plays like those characters, like in the skits. Like, a, yeah, he's, yeah in the, he was, he's, a, he's in the friggin' in the race draft. Yeah, he was yeah. making all the great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, yes. 
<laughs> All right. So this is my number eight, I believe. Yep. I'm going to go with one that you know very well, Tom, and that is 1990s Damon Wayans' Last Stand. Oh, good one. Right that's when 19, we got into that, college. And that's, and that's 1990. Yep. Yeah. Right when we got into college, somebody had that on VHS and brought it in. Yep. And he was fucking hilarious. He had one skit specifically where he was like, I'm down with public enemy, uh, yeah. heavy D, people on the positive tip. I ain't too down with this two live crew shit. <laughs> yeah. There's some gangsters <laughs> with a microphone. And he has this big fat black Chinese motherfucker. <laughs> me so horny, me so horny. Well, well, well get yourself some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Take that gold tooth out of your mouth and go get some money and go buy yourself some pussy. And your music won't be so corny. <laughs> that's fucking legendary. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's back in the VHS cassette days. Yes. That's when he, he was running fucking Handyman. That He was talking oh, about that yeah. in his ad. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then he's like talking about being at the gym and this one guy in the corner just rubbing his belly. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, look at all this <laughs> dick. <Yeah. laughs> And then he took <laughs> that character and he made it fucking men on film. Men on film. Fucking, it's brilliant. That's right. You can see yeah. all the in living colors from that skit. It's Dude, those, Damon those, Wayans, the last man. That family, that family tree of the Wayans is fucking legendary. <laughs> all of them. Marlon Wayans. I'm going to get you, uh, sucker. Obviously, Keenan yeah. Ivory Wayans. Just in, incredible brilliance, those guys. Yeah. All right. My number eight, I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn. This guy is one of those rare comedians that can pull off uh, his routines without cursing, without being filthy. It's my kind of like it, it, it's when I'm when I'm not in the mood for like a George Carlin or a Damon Wayans or, you know, Kings of Comedy. I got into him. I think I think the first one I saw here was 2007. It's called Standing Up. His name is Brian Regan. He's oh, he's he's, he, yeah, he's a regular guy. His. Yeah, he's he, he's he's another one of those guys. But the thing that kills me about him is his delivery, his mannerisms, which you said this at the beginning of the episode. That is a huge thing for me with comedy. Your delivery, your mannerisms, your facial expressions, the, your tone. And this guy, it's, observ it's observational humor. It's like Seinfeld type shit. But I just think his the way he is, his face, his his style, 2007 standing up. It's one of my favorite ones. He's got a bunch. He's gotten older, so his routine kind of. You know, some of these guys, they get older, they kind of kind of round off the edges a little bit on their routines, but he's still great. But 2007 standing up is my favorite one of his. Yeah, great, yeah. great. Yep. I remember him. You know where he first started and I first saw him? MTV had a comedy show where they were oh, showing stand-up comedians. Yeah, okay. And the guy that was on, um, I think he was on Seinfeld once, and he was on Chris Rock's show. What well, it was, he was at a shaved head. The black guy, Mar was it Marlon, Mal something like that? He Martin was the, no, he <laughs> was the he was the host of that, and he would show different people. And Brian Regan, Brian Regan, him. yeah, nice. I remember okay. him. Um, all right, Tom, I'm gonna go with, and I I, I want to kind of see. I have some. I'm gonna pick the ones that you probably wouldn't pick or know, and that in so I can leave if we have duplicates time for put somebody else in that we don't okay. have. Go ahead. So I'm going to go with in one of my favorite, favorite, favorite ones of all time. And I think it was the first HBO comedy special ever. I know who this is. Go ahead. This is Red Fox on location, 1978. Awesome. I have oh. it on DVD. It is just nonstop. I, you know, I, Sam for the Sun is my favorite fucking special. Yep. I know. It is just weird. Listen to Fred Sanford just throw out the most vulgar stuff he is he is so nasty <laughs> with his comedy he is but, so nasty he has like one liners like henry youngman he's just yeah. throwing out stupid shit in the middle of it he'll be telling a big story about something like uh go sink it or rob me i'll cut it and then yeah. next thing you know he's like oh confucius say yeah a fart in elevated smell different to midget <laughs> like, <it's> like stupid <laughs> shit like that and you're like dying laughing <laughs> And um, and then he ends his bit, his show, yeah, with that whole thing about like you got to wash your ass. Oh yes, walking yes. outside, you go inside, you eat, you sit down, you go in the elevator, you go in the bathroom, it goes itself. You got to hit that shit with the washcloth. And guys, <laughs> make sure you wash those wild hickory nuts. 
<laughs> and then he talks about fooling around with this woman. And he's like, if you don't wash it, and then you fool around, and you're under the covers, and then that cover blows up, and it's <laughs> and then it falls down. He goes, and it blows all that in. The way he describes it, and he does like a little bit of that Fred Sanford, like his heart attack. Yeah, yeah. Honey, <laughs> he's like, funk just comes up. Let me get a raincoat. I think it's a shit storm. Oh. God, he's like, so I think good. it's you. It's like, I think your monkey died. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. 1978, Red Fox, his uh, the first HBO comedy special. Fucking okay. brilliant. All right. This next one, it was actually what kind of generated this topic because my 80 year old mother who's visiting oh. from Florida, we decided to watch it. And I oh. texted Zeus and they're like, this is what we're doing. I will never forget. We used to watch this religiously when you lived in Arlington, when yep. I, when we lived near each other. And that is 2000s. I might need security. Yes. Jamie Fox. Fucking love oh, it. Dude, dude. Oh, God. I can't. I almost don't even want to talk about it, but we always come back to the OJ bit. It's like he, he always looks guilty. But you know what gives away? <laughs> Hey, whatever gives it away is that walk. Like he's like he's wiping shit off his shoes. And he's got that smile on his face. He, he's got that walk. Yeah, he does oh. that walk. And he like, does that walk. I don't recognize. Then all of a sudden you see it. And you're like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I kill again, motherfucker. That's right. I kill again. Oh, God. Just please check it. The, the, we're going to put all this up on the website, obviously, like we always do. You've got to check. Jamie Foxx, I might need security. Oh. It's it's on YouTube. I think the entire thing is on YouTube for free. The other one on that is that trip to Africa when he talks about filming Ali. That is one of the funniest fucking bits. Oh, yeah. His whole experience in Africa. It yep. does smell like shit, doesn't it? Motherfucker, that is you. Motherfucker, that's you. <laughs> no, motherfucker. You need to take a bath. You need to not take a bath. <laughs> fucking thing is oh god oh, brilliant all right tom that's a duplicate for me i'll take that off my list um, hey if we have duplicate there's going to be duplicates so just you can keep them all i have enough but- i have okay enough all right all right um all right so i'm gonna take and you probably have them on your list but i'm taking this set okay i'm taking dave Chappelle's for what it's worth oh okay and that's from 2004. Now you could pick a million of Chappelle's shows. Yep. That one specifically, because he has that monkey and AIDS bit. Oh, God. It says, people said AIDS came from a monkey. Word? Like somebody sitting on you. Yeah. Like, you know how hot it is to catch a monkey? Yeah. Let alone fuck it. <laughs> he's don't want to be fucked by humans. <laughs> it's like, he's like, you're hanging out the crib and your boys, hey, we're going to hit the, we're going to hit the club. You want to come? Nah, man. Nah, man. <laughs> no. Nah. Nah. Hang out here with my monkey. Which <laughs> Jim can run gonna jerk me off with her feet. Only a <laughs> monkey can give you that kind of love and tenderness. <laughs> you can get more pussy out there, more monkey pussy for me. <laughs> and then he does that one is also grape drink. That's oh, another Oh god, yes. Water, sugar, yep. grape. Yep. <laughs> Dave, what are you talking about? We have grape juice. Motherfucker, what is juice? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> the whole Indian thing, remember? Yep. Oh, I yeah. am an alcoholic. <laughs> and then the last thing, Tom, when he talks about, like, I was going to stand up and talk, but then I saw what happened to those Dixie chicks, and I was like, fuck that. <laughs> and then he talks about, you know, I was watching MTV around that time, and they're like, let's get Ja Rule on the phone to talk about <laughs> September 11th. I love that. I love that. He's like, I want to talk to Ja Rule about <laughs> September that. 11th. What I love that. What's wrong with you people? So that one's fucking brilliant. I think it's oh. so good. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of Dave Chappelle, I'm going with Dave Chappelle, too. I'm going to go back a few years before that to 2000 to Killing Them Softly. Yes. Which yes. which was another one that came out again. Jamie Foxx came out in 2000. Chappelle, this one came out in 2000. This is when we were in our glory with these guys. And it's just. You guys, if we have young listeners out there or people that aren't familiar, I, all I can say is you just have to go watch these comedy. When I was watching Jamie Foxx and I did and I watched Killing Them Softly recently, too. For obvious, various reasons, comedy is like so different now 
I mean, there are guys like Bill Burr and some other guys that are just they, that they don't give a shit. They'll say whatever and they don't care. But when you when you hear Chappelle, he's talking about like. He's like, yeah, yeah, the white people in Washington, I don't, I don't like the old white people. <laughs> we can't scam them anymore like we used to. Yeah. He's like, I'll go up to him and be like, boo, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one where I believe he goes, I walked into a place. You ever have something racist, so racist happen to you? And you're like, what the fuck? It's like, I wasn't even mad. I was upset. And he's like, I walked into this place and I'm like, I'm going to have. And the guy goes, the chicken. Yes. yes, that one. I was like, "Fuck! What the fuck? How the fuck did he know I was gonna have the chicken?" Yep. Hey, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Everybody, goddamn you! As soon as you walked in here, you were gonna get yourself some chicken. It's brutal, <laughs> fucking. But his, de- but he's one of those guys with his delivery and his impression. His white people voice <laughs> is just fucking legendary. Oh my god, I, I I can't get enough of it. No, I think he's fucking hilarious. Legend. Yep. All right, let's tone it down to the opposite of that. Okay. So I'm gonna go with. The Blue Collar Comedy Tour in 2003, Ah. Jeff Foxworthy. I loved him ever since he first came out. And, uh, you know, being in uh, college at the time when country music exploded, he was like the cool guy amongst all the country music acts, had a a southern drawl. And he he just he was just funny, smart, observing comedy that, you know, he could always find something humorous in it. And. The one thing he does specifically in this set, and it's similar to original Kings of Comedy and Latin Kings of Comedy. There's four of them there. When he does his set, yep, uh, I think there were 30, and that was like Larry the uh, Cable Guy, Bill Engvall, and uh, who's the other guy? Ron White. Ron White. And his is a 30-minute set. But when he does redneck words, I fucking die laughing. Oh, it's awesome. He was great. He He had his moment. (laughs) <laughs> mayonnaise mayonnaise a lot of people out here today <laughs> hey order they ought to cut the ball in the grass near the ball field before some boy gets hurt or something enunciate my wife ate my hamburger cheeseburger and then she ate a bag of <laughs> chips and a hot dog <laughs> Stupid. So good, it though. Racks so me good. Up. And he's got some other good observant comedy uh, bits and laughter and stuff Good guy, and yep. I, I like his comedy bit. So that is the uh, uh, Blue Collar Comedy Tour uh, 2003. Nice. Yeah, awesome. Comedy. All right, number five, one of my all-time favorites. Definitely a, a you know more recent guy, you know, past 10, 12 years, whatever, but everybody knows him because his specials are on Netflix or streaming. They're everywhere. That is Sebastian Maniscalco. The guy's a fucking absolutely kills me. I can't even get through his shows because he kills me. I'm going with 2014's What's Wrong with People? Strictly because of the bit on the doorbell. Yeah. Because if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch it. If you do know what I'm talking about, you know it. Because he is, to me, he took the torch as the king of the observational humor. But he, again, he does it with with delivery and tone and style and, and he's just like, he's a crank and I love it. He just bitches about everything. I was going to pick the other one with, uh, that he does called, aren't you embarrassed where he goes on this rant about how, cause he's married to a, his wife is Jewish and he goes to like a Passover meal and he's just like, <laughs> he's, he, he's like, he's like the Jewish people. They have absolutely no idea what they're doing in the kitchen. Have you ever heard anybody say, Hey, we just went to this really nice Jewish restaurant the other night. He's like, let's do Passover meal, but let's have the Italians cater it. And oh, I, he, that's the one where he's like, first, we're going to read for two hours. Like two yeah, hours, two hours. He's like, he's like, if I'm sitting down on a table, I need bread within 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Fucking that's legend. Legend. Good one. Good yep. one. Good one. Yep. Uh, Tom, I'm going to take a classic. I'm sure you may have had this on your list. And that's Chris Rock's Bring the Pain 96. Yep. And we all know blocks versus the N-word, that bit. But there's more to it than that. So many great jokes and comedy bits. And uh, even when I like, shit, there's a reason to kick an old man down a flight of stairs. Just that doesn't mean do it. <laughs> and he's talking about, like, uh, of domestic abuse. Everybody's doing it. Warren Moon. I forget the other names. Then he goes, Billy D. Will. They 
Dilly D. Williams. Williams beating on women. I guess he must have had too much Colt 45. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Talk about one, delivery. Absolutely one of the uh, that's one of the greats. That's yeah, one of the greats. That that went so viral. Oh. And he talked about the fact that his career was dead. And yeah. that bit what like just Put him into the stratosphere. It's it one of the incredible. greats of all time. That's one of the great. If you go and Google, which I did just out of curiosity, if you Google like greatest stand up comedy specials, of that's all time, always in there. A's in like usually top five, top eight, whatever, right? Yeah. There. Legend. Bring the pain. Yep. Le- all right. 96. Now, my number four might be a little bit of controversy. It might be a lot of controversy because this guy is a piece of shit. However, Ooh. when he was the one of the kings, in the 70s and 80s, he wasn't a piece of shit. So I'm going to try to separate the art from the artist here. And it was one of my earliest memories of clean comedy. It was on cable all the time. I loved it. My dad loved it. It was one of those things where you could actually watch as a family because it was okay. no curse words. And it was brilliant observational family observational humor. And that is Bill Cosby himself from 1983. Yep. One of the, to this day. It's still great. Now, again, I know Bill Cosby's a piece of shit. He does, I get it. He deserves everything he's getting. He's a total piece of shit. I get it. But I'm not one of those people that that, that cancel people because of their past. You know, he, he was funny in 1983. If I if it's on TV, I'm going to watch it. I mean, everybody knows the 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 chocolate cake routine. That is great. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's 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 the it's one of the greatest. And I think he says. I think he says. Jesus Christ, maybe once and like shit, maybe once. I'm not even sure. But other than that, it's talking about his kids, his marriage and all that stuff. He does a bit on getting drunk. It's just it's great. It's great. And if you are the kind of person that can separate, then I highly recommend this one. It's it's legendary. Two things. First, I remembered my grade school teachers played yep. his comedy albums in class. Yeah. Yeah. He used to, he can't he comes from a generation where they had we had vinyl records of yeah. of Bill Cosby records yeah. of the yeah. yeah the teacher in yep. grade school played yep. Bill Cosby albums for us. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one I'll never forget. I can't find the. I've looked for this clip a while. This is after all the shit kind of came out. Um, Eddie Murphy was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Yep. And Leno's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, with me and and Bill, you know, I'm a little bit older, you know, I got this and that and. Bill, you know, sometimes he would do his thing like late night Bill comedy. He's like, what? He's like, Bill Cosby. He's like, yeah, it was like after dark Bill. And Bill would goes, what the? F-? And Eddie Murphy was like a gas. It's like, what was that? And then I, and he did the impression. Yeah. And then I the- kicked the bitch down the stairs. And I was just like, yep. <laughs> he did that voice as Bill Cosby cursing and swearing and beating up women. I was like, what the fuck? Yep. Oh, oh so my good. God. Bill so Cosby. Good. Yeah, it's the legend still. It's, it's a good, it's a good one. Yep. But I'm going to stay on that theme, Tom, and I'm going to stick with 80 Murphy's Raw. And, wow, and, okay. that, and that goes in 1987. And yep. that's, and it just leads me right back to the Bill Cosby. Yep. <laughs> well, tell Bill to have a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. And that fucking whole bit. I would like to talk to you, to you about, about. <laughs> you cannot say fuck. And he's like, I got mad. I like that. That's my whole act. Yeah. Good night. So, <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> motherfucker. Bye-bye. Good night. Piss off. Fuck off. And then, the, and then the whole bit. Dexter St. Jock <laughs> yes. is fucking your wife. Well, Mr. T. And then he does the <laughs> whole. Like it's smart comedy when he's talking about he's a star and he doesn't want to get trapped. Yep. He's like, hey, I went to the supermarket and I say, what's up with uh, Johnny and shit? Johnny's wife wants half his money, and I and Johnny's like this. Face he makes, <laughs> and then of course the famous thing. Maybe it wasn't you. <laughs> and I look right in your face. <laughs> it was me. Hey, I got a funny story about Eddie Murphy me. Raw. I got a funny story about Eddie Murphy Raw. I saw that in the theaters. Ooh, you were crazy to do that. I Would you literally go to Fresh I, Pond Mall. I, I, I think literally worse. Assembly Square in oh, Somerville. Jesus. Me, I, th- I think we were literally the old. Now I was like fifteen. I still don't know how we got in Jesus back then. You could get into Christ. R-rated movies, 
I think we were literally the only white people there. And I was like, oh, God. Like, I felt like like the fucking guy in Animal House. So <laughs> we are going to die. Yeah. And it's funny because I saw Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> at the, at Fresh the, Pond. At the Fresh Pond Mall. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. Terrible. All right, buddy. All right. All right, number three. So I'm going to go back to uh, I'm going to go back to Chris Rock, but I'm going to go 1999, bigger and blacker. Yes, which which is fucking fantastic. It's not it's not bring the pain. It's still, but it's fucking so genius. it's so good. He does, he does this thing he's talking about. He goes, I got a little cousin who got left back in the first grade. <laughs> left back in the first grade. <laughs> You know how dumb you gotta be. <laughs> hey, what's four plus four? I don't know, Jello. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's when he. That's when he was just on such a run. I mean, oh you're right. God. The bring bring the pain set him off into another, uh, like into another layer. Yeah, the king. Oh, at he that was time, fantastic. At that time. I watched yep. all those on HBO and stuff. It was like. Like during that time, HBO was in another stratosphere. Yeah. Like you got all these comedy specials that were going on. Always. You had uh, Carlin. You had fucking Chris Rock. You, they you were events. Some, they were the HBO Sopranos, events. Sopranos yep. would be playing all these great shows. Oz. It yep. just, it was just something else. Yep. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, Tom. Uh, n- my second to last one. I'm going to take the Latin Kings of Comedy and George Lopez's skit. Oh, nice. Love it. I quote it all the time that being from a, like a immigrant family of myself, I I, like a lot of those jokes hit home. And what (laughs) year was that? What year did that one come out? The Latin Kings of comedy came out 2002, 2002. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And he fucking hits it out of the park. The whole thing of like white people see a line like, oh God, there's a line. He's like Mexican people see a line like, get in line, get in line, get in line. <laughs> and he's like doing like his person like, like, okay, like what am I in line for? He doesn't give a fuck. And he, oh my God, it's so funny. Talk about like delivery and like the facial expressions that he makes so off the charts. Yep. And he's like, and everybody's in their family's always got that one cousin in a wheelchair with a fucked up wheelchair. <laughs> and your grandma's always like, push your cousin, put your cousin. <laughs> and he's like, and Mexican people don't greet themselves like, hey, how are you? How you been? They're like, do a fucking head <laughs> yeah. move. And uh. like, hey, we, and, and when you haven't seen somebody in 20 years, like, oh my God, how you been? And he's like, yeah. Mexican people are like, where you been, puto? <laughs> Pushing my cousin. <laughs> oh, God. Ocean my, ocean, my cousin. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Oh. It is so off the chart. I, I, I can watch that nonstop laughing my ass off. George Lopez, uh, and that's the Latin Kings of Comedy 2002. Okay. My last two are my favorite clean comedy and favorite filthy comedy. Okay. So number two for me is I actually remember the very first time I saw this and I remember having to pause it because I was thought I was going to piss myself. And that is 1998's I'm telling you for the last time, Jerry Seinfeld, one of the I mean, just and I love the concept of it. If you've ever seen it before, it starts off where he has a funeral for the jokes. Yeah. And it's all these legendary comedians, Robert Klein and Gary Shandling and all these guys are there. Yeah. And they're all there and they're all like dropping like jokes into the casket. And then it starts off and the little kid is like, Mr. And then he's like, all right, but I'm telling you for the last time. And then he gets up and he does all of his greatest hits. And it's just, yeah, it's so fucking perfect. I, I remember buying the DVD and, oh, I, I just, I, to this day, I still love it. I still love it. And like you said, you could just keep going back to it and back to it and back to it. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I remember that one. I, I have that as yep. well. Fucking yep. brilliant. Brilliant. Yep. yep. All right, Tom. The last one, I don't know how I saw this or found it. Okay. But it's probably, it could be my favorite comedy special. And I don't really have that many other ones of his I've seen. I've tried okay. them. I haven't found one that I really like. And that is 1998's. Eddie Izzard's Dress to Kill. Oh, yes. You we we watched that together, I thought, or at least we watched one of his together. Yeah. So yes. oh, I've I've watched one. I've watched this movie a million times. Yes. You got like first when you see him and, and you like you're getting into the concept, like, what uh, you know, I saw this in 2098. Yeah. So like 
you get over the fact that like the guy dresses as a woman and he enjoys it and he talks about transvestite stuff. Fucking That's not hilarious. it. But when he gets into history and starts talking about like religion, historical stuff, and like talking about like, yeah, I'm from Europe where history comes from. And he talks about Stonehenge and those, and those stones came from like fucking like a thousand, a thousand miles or a million miles away. Yep. And they put and he's like, and you can picture the time people pushing it, pushing it. You want this to push it? It's not far, is it? It's like 10,000 miles in this day and age. Where the fuck do I live? It's like all these people are like, how the fuck did I get here? Yep. Holy shit. And then he does like the whole thing about the uh, Church of England and and all their like, you know, how how they're not very aggressive in their fucking stuff. And and like, yep. uh, Vicar, Vicar, I've done something bad. Well, so have I. Just yes. <laughs> all that stuff that he does in the humor and the fucking delivery. Yeah. And the he's good. He's he made, really, really good. Fucking brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, if you guys have never seen it, watch it. It's if you like history and humor and things like that. Brilliant. Eddie Izzard's 1998 uh, Dress to Kill. I love it. I remember that one. All right. My number one is to me. There are transformational events in your life, movies, music, things that you just remember, and they just become part of your life for better or for worse. I know we're not ranking these, Mm -hmm. but if we were, this would be my number one, because to me, it is the most untouchable thing on this entire list for me. And that is 1983's Eddie Murphy Delirious. It it, it is to, to it is. I remember, like like everybody else our age, Zeus, watching this way too young, way too young, and not really getting all of what he was talking about, but knowing that it was funny. I mean, the red leather suit just became fucking iconic. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously filthy, but then he just does like like some of the funny shit, like the ice cream man. And then he starts getting into the family stuff. It's like, but he fell down the steps. But he fell down the steps. <laughs> like, just stupid <laughs> shit like that. I mean, that's where we get our, our punchlines from with Elvis. You know, Elvis, we got to win this race. <laughs> we got to win, win this race. <laughs> like, it's, it's, and I remember it with that, that was 83 when cable was kind of new in my house, when we had HBO and there was no, nobody knew what the hell was on. I mean, you'd come home from school and Eddie Murphy delirious is on. And it just became ingrained for people. Are I don't think anybody between the ages of forty and fifty don't know almost every word to this routine. Yeah, I, I could say that I was more into raw because I was a little older. Okay, I stood I it could, more. I, I could see that. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure which one. I, I think raw is a little smarter. I do too. Fucking delirious is just delirious is way more chaotic and, and nutty you're right raw you could see that like he had he had kind of grown quote unquote as a comedian for raw definitely yeah, there's a lot yeah. of stories and things connect yes but delirious when he does the singers oh my god and mid jack mid jack's an ugly motherfucker with oh. big ass lips and black people are like <laughs> you got some, you got big, some ass big ass lips, lips. and he does <laughs> What's the other one? Uh, and Luther Vandross, the big Kentucky Fried Chicken eat motherfucker. Teddy Pendergrass, he scared the panties <laughs> over those women. You got, you got, you got what I need. <laughs> when we were like, ah! You used the line from that when we talked about, I forget what song it came up on ARC, but remember. Oh, it was Billy, it was Billy, it was Billy Squire. It was, it was, it was when we were doing Don't Say No. It was like, it was two days gone. It was like, move in. No, move no. In. Yeah. No. And then we're like, move in. Yeah. Move in. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a different, that's from Saturday Night Live oh, with Saturday James Brown. Live. No, it was something, but somebody we brought up. Nothing for nothing means nothing. It was nothing for nothing. It was Cinderella night song. And that's, what, that's where it was. And then you threw that quote I, in. I, I said, nothing from nothing means nothing. I had to do something. <laughs> Motherfucker punch you in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. Oh, it's that's so fun. good. Love it. So Love it. Those are 10 each. Yep. No duplicates. Guys, oh. go out and watch them and tell us what you think is your favorite. 
We'll have we'll do this probably list again because there's oh, so yeah. many we can choose from. There's a uh, there's a couple legends on here that we don't have. I know people are going to be like, how could you have a list and not have this name and that name? We'll, we'll get, get to it. it. We'll get to it. We'll get to them. Till next time. Peace out, Girl Scout.